so our group members had made some progress. Initially, we started off with, on a scale of 1 to 5, about 1.5, and ended off with 3. So when we took the lessons and went back home, in terms of assessing our students innovatively, we rated ourselves around 1.5. But we've made some progress now, which is 3. One member, in an attempt to test uh, data collection skills of her students, actually asked them to go out there and speak with people in different, um, more or less, sectors of the school. So some of them went to the bar stops, some went to the hospital, and applied the skills that they've gotten. And one of the innovative things a student did, when um, he, she was asked to find out why a lot of students go to the hospital during exam time, was to join the sick people, ask a patient, see the doctor, and when she got there, she posed the question to, to him. So ordinarily, she would have done a questionnaire, etc. But when she was asked to do something from her own view, that was the approach she used. Then learning theories. We, we definitely uh, saw a lot of our group members using the transformative approaches. And um, just a few of very minimal with the multiple um, intelligence. So for the transformative approaches, we, I, we, we do have one member who, in a debate over whether school children should be given um, school uniforms or not for free, asked the students to begin the debate. So in the middle of the debate, they paused and he showed a video. After watching the video, the students who were arguing against uh, the need to give school children uniforms changed their mind. They got into a dilemma and uh, because of the influence the video had on them. So through um, the presentation on, on the video, the minds of the students were being what, transformed. In terms of um, learning theories, as I said, we also saw one uh, professor uh, using the experiential approach. And what he did was to spend very little time when he was teaching econometrics with the theory and then move the students into a lab which the school has set up, a very modern lab with all the softwares that they need. So the students went in there and the things that they learned from theory, they applied it using data he had asked them to collect. So through the experience, they were able to do the econometrics work. Then the, in terms of teaching methods, um, most members in uh, the economics cluster uh, used e-cases, as I demonstrated above. And the main tools which supported these uh, e-cases were the discussions. After they've watched the e-case, they do discussions and they also do debates. Some of our team members uh, have, in terms of experience, also gone beyond the usual approaches to the use of WhatsApp. So they've set up a WhatsApp group where some form of discussions and lectures go on. Then um, pedagogical leadership, one of the interesting things we find in our group, as people uh, tell us, is that now they make the students understand that they are not just there to study, but to study and go and apply. And, and because of that, they push them to think critically. This critical thinking approach also encourages the students to think about the rules each actor in the uh, political economy plays. Facilitators also encourage behavioral change. So if students thought that everything should come from government, they were now encouraged to understand that there were some of the things in terms of the political economy who should also be promoted by members of the society. So uh, in a broad view, this is uh, how the way we teach has been transformed. So teaching methods, as I suggested, we were doing just about um, three over five. Now many of us are doing four over five. Learning theory is the same. Innovative assessment, yes, it was not very uh, popular, but we see we've crossed the 50% mark. 
It is the same for the pedagogical leadership. And we are hoping that as we move forward, we can make uh, more progress. So we take a snapshot of how things have changed at the initial stages. That is during uh, September last year and around January, we take a snapshot and then finally we take another snapshot in um, June. If you take a look at it, all the trends uh, point upwards, but definitely there's more room for improvement. We are doing an average of about, let's say 3.25, so there's more room for improvement when you consider uh, teaching methods, pedagogy, and all that. So we also put uh, the same thing in trend lines, and it's an upward trend. But notice that some of the trends are higher than others. And the question being asked is why we've not been able to bridge those gaps. And if you take a look at what happened this afternoon, especially for issues pertaining to the use of technology, the <laughs> sometimes they are just not there, and when they are there, they don't work. So students getting access to softwares, etc., makes some of the teaching methods very difficult to apply. Were there aha moments? Yes, there were. Master students were excited when their professor uh, gave them the opportunity to engage with PhD students. And what the professor observed was that, so this was something new. What the professor observed was that now the confidence with which the students engage with her after they had gone to make a presentation to their PhD student has increased. And um, when they started using their smartphone phones to engage their professors, that was also an exciting uh, moment for them. Because for most of them, WhatsApp and all that was uh, to be used at the friendship level. There were gaps in terms of uh, technology and the tools availability, especially softwares for uh, econometric analysis on the computers of uh, students. The cost of some of them are quite high, Stata especially. But for, um, how do you call it, uh, SPSS, which is a bit cheaper, quite a number of the students have them. Then, although we've used a lot of these uh, skills, there's still a challenge for the students to understand uh, the quantitative approaches. Mind you, these are students which have been assembled from all uh, different um, uh, learning areas. And we are pushing them to learn economics. Some way, somehow, it becomes difficult for them. And in our minds, we need to work hard to reduce the complexities associated with our uh, um, economics and make it accessible to even English students who want to do public policy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give him a better clap, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are the sociology group and uh, we put together something where a number of us, um, uh, I'll ask them probably to introduce them, themselves. Um, just mention your names, please. Okay, and Monica, yes, and... Exactly. So, me and Amfumi are going to represent uh, the rest. Um, we decided to make our work easier by, by using the SWOT, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We thought that would bring our minds into kind of order. So, um, we looked at um, our strength, uh, strength in our pedagogical journey. We all shared and then came up with what we had. Uh, all techniques were applied. Um, you know, the various techniques we've been learning in pedagogy, they were all applied. So that's the strength. What we realize is that these techniques enhance deeper learning because it's beyond a lecturer standing in class to present and it involves the, 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 the students. It is student learner centered, meaning the students take the, the first place. So they, they, they learn and they're involved in the learning process. 
student involvement is enhanced. Um, there is, uh, it's transformative for both lecturer and student. Now, these pedagogical uh, skills and techniques, they don't only enhance the student, but the lecturer also is challenged to be able to go and, and think of innovative ways in which he, he or she can come and teach the students. So there is a transformation in both the students and the lecturers. So those are the strengths that we got. Then challenges, we could use weaknesses, but we don't want it to seem like it's really weak. But challenges that we have faced, um, inefficient technology, poor Wi-Fi, um, we realize that actually there's a, a challenge with Wi-Fi everywhere. We are representatives from University of Dar es Salaam, Uganda Christian University, and University of Ibadan. And University of Lagos. And in University of Lagos. Thank you, Professor. Yes, so we actually realized everybody was mentioning the same weakness. Poor Wi-Fi, internet facilities, lack of sufficient projectors, and if they are there, they are not even working. Uh, lack of sockets in the, in the halls where this should be taking place. And then we also realized infrastructure challenges, architecture of the room. Now, not all rooms are able to cater for you know, these various pedagogical methodologies. We find some rooms, for example, in the University of Ibadan, um, uh, they, they have the, the, the chairs and infrastructure are fixed. Yeah, and then there's also initial student resistance to this teaching technology. We find the students have been resistant, and there's also lack of consistent power supply. So I'll ask my colleague to continue with this. We don't have so much time. We so. spent very little time on this, and then you explain that. The graph, okay. Eh? Okay. Okay. okay, okay. Then we can explain. The opportunities are there. We have the opportunities to use these skills and other master's programs. And um, for some people, can even cascade to the undergraduate programs. Then instrument support from the university administration, partnership with other related uh, bodies, and we can also collaborate with other universities. We see as threats lack of <coughs> instrument support. If you have a situation where there is also reduced funding, either from Pascal or other uh, funders, and where even trainees who are here are not. Uh, sufficiently motivated with incentives. We went ahead to make recommendations. And some of the recommendations are that we should harmonize uh, levels of trainings you know, with, with university staff. So that you don't have just some set of people being trained all the time. We need also to have intergenerational consideration. So that when older people retire, they will have been sufficiently trained younger persons to take care from there. And then other universities have to have their staff trained. For example, we the University of Ibadan had a critical mass of its personnel trained. But that is not the same for other universities, it's important. There are the problems of infrastructure. The recommendations are targeted at different actors. Everything is not for Pascal, there are those for governments of institutions, there are those that are for universities. Internet needs to be improved facilities, um, other facilities like cameras, projectors, and so on. Other staff also need to mobilize other institutions, and then deeper collaboration. And we'll move on to the, uh, to the graph. We selected three goals. As of the goals are presented, we have constructive alignment, speaking specifically about course outlines. Then uh, the second goal is the use of interactive methods of teaching. We are deliberated and we are agreeing that um, people have seen the training and are using video clips, case studies, simulations, and others. And then number three, innovative methods of assessment. Now, if you look at the graph, the um, black is used to show the constructive alignment. By August 2018, when those who came for the training were here, they were not exactly on zero. They, some had been using some, are looking at the course of lines and reviewing them. So it's at one. And consistently, even though it's, it's, it hasn't been going very well, but as it is now, in terms of constructive alignment, we're somewhere around three, I mean, over five. And then the second one is interactive methods. For the interactive methods, 
people are not exactly on zero because some are already using group uh, methods, some are already using um, representation case studies, some case studies, and so on. But it was slightly about maybe 0 0.5 or so. Mm. But it has been embraced so seriously, and now we have um, between 4 and 5. Yeah. It's not exactly mm. um, 100%. And if I'm looking at methods of as, um, assessment, that also we were not on. On it's zero. Like zero, zero yeah. between zero and one mm. in August. But by now, a lot of people have embraced the innovative methods of assessment, and we have the somewhere between three and four in yeah. June uh, 2019. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that it's not a better club. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We are coming to you live from Mombasa, Kenya, and we are still covering the Pedagogical Leadership Annual Convening and the MPRP Week. And we have spent three days in uh, Mombasa. We have been looking at a series of issues concerning pedagogical leadership in Africa. And we have some of our participants um, here with us. We want to listen to them, take their views, and then the outcomes of um, this um, training and basically what they will be doing when they return to their universities. You are welcome to AUTV. Rock. Thank you very much. Great. So you tell us your name, your institution, and then um, your portfolio in your institution as well. Well, my name is Lucky Igono. I am a faculty officer, faculty of the basic medical sciences. Um, sorry, faculty of the, the social sciences. Okay. The social sciences, University of Ibadan, Nigeria. Great. And so I believe this is not your first time um, joining PEDAL. Oh yes, I was here, I was in Nairobi uh, in 2018, okay. yes. In 2018, were you uh, at Ibadan? I was at Ibadan, but I came to Nairobi then. Okay. So this is your third session? Second session. Second session. Yes. All right, so let me find out from you, what has been the journey from you, right from the first session, the second session, and then today? Well, like I said, this is my second session. Um, the first session was... Um, um, I realized that um, Pedal um, was quite um, interested in ensuring that um, there is a systemic change in teaching and learning in Africa and that um, teaching and learning should be made more interesting by both the uh, teachers and also the learners, that is, students. And then, um, I, I basically, I think this time around, with my experience, Pedal is trying to see if there has been any change, okay. um, any improvement a year ago, where we are. Um, they want to see if there has been any change. And I'm happy to tell you that there has been a, 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 good, a good change. All right, so tell us the change. That is the most important thing to us. What has changed over the years and what is new now? Well, I can speak for my own institution. Though there are some other African universities that are here represented. Um, from my experience, my own institution in Ibadan, Nigeria, this change has actually been uh, actually uh, adopted by some faculties now. And they have actually changed their way of... Um, we have actually changed. We have moved from the old ways and now adopting the pedal um, training um, model. Yeah, so we want people who don't know PEDAL to know what has actually been the change. So if you say the old ways and then the new ways, what specifically has changed? When, um, in terms of e-learning, e-learning okay. e has now been adopted uh, by these institutions, especially Ibadan, where um, teachers, lecturers teach the students technologically. And also the students will learn through e-learning. E that is, you don't have to be based in one class setting. Okay. You can teach your student online. Right. They give you feedback online. Mm -hmm. And even you can even examine them. Okay. And which makes it very, very interesting and uh, um, easy to, 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 to use. Okay. So for me, uh, I think it's a very good development. All right, so let's still based on the e-learning which you are talking about. Um, assuming one, one day you wake up, you enter your lecture theater, and your students are not there, and they, all pref they prefer that you go the e-way, what will be your reaction? And then again, if they want to 
submit assignments through their emails they want to submit assignment through whatsapp what will be your reaction as, as a lecturer well like i say i'm not a lecturer i'm i'm an administrator, administrator. Yeah. um of course we work hand in hand and uh, because my role is to ensure that uh, all these things are well put in place so i cannot actually divorce myself from uh, the teaching learning situation because I'm, I'm i'm in the system we ensure that all these things are put in place properly and also followed uh, which you may call due process but the, the truth of the matter is that um, uh, I cannot pretend not to know that this great change has actually occurred and then um, my point of view is quite clear if if um, lecturers teach students uh, we're in the 21st century and we have to flow with the modern trends in the even western world uh, we are now in, in a situation whereby teachers are not expected teachers are not expected to just come to class give outline talk talk to and go away no that is a cake now students even more know more than their teachers so this is why teachers must uh, fall in line that is they must be compliant technologically you see now you can ask your students to go online, get information, and uh, not just coming to them to say, blah, 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 blah. Before you come to teach, they would have already been well grounded in what you want to teach them. And so it becomes something like an interactive se session. We are not just coming to tell them what you know or what you think they should know. But now you want to learn together. You want to flow. So you, 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 it's 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 more of the ideal day system of teaching, which is a far, far, far departure from what it used to be. For me, like I said, I'm not a teacher. I think it's very good. All right. So you spent three days here. What is your take home to Ibadan? Oh, uh, for me, uh, I'll say. Especially your aha moment. Oh, aha moment. Um, it, it, it's to me, it's more challenging. I see it as a challenging moment for me because we can do more. Um, the, the gaps can actually be filled by doing more. Uh, the journey so far, and then where we want to be, probably next year, God willing, what we'll be able to to say the, I mean, to to give um, results because. From my observation since I came, most of these institutions have actually recorded good, le significant level of progress in terms of their teaching and learning situations. And then, what one question that will come to mind is: these teachers, how can this pedal thing contribute to their own personal development? Of course, you cannot give what you don't have. And this brings up the issue of having to assess the teachers hmm, in terms of promotion. Because that means teaching will now be part of the assessment for promotion. Even students can now have the opportunity to assess their teachers. And vis-a-vis, -vis, teachers too will now be able to know how they stand. Because now, like I said, we are no longer in that old age of you just coming to class, dull things out for students to learn. No, this time around, you 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 come together, you you discuss together, you learn together, you go online, you have access to information. In fact, the other good aspect of this is that you can even invite guest lecturers to participate in your teaching. You can do video conferencing or what have you in such a way that the students feel so good that oh this is a new way of learning and consciously and unconsciously they are imbibing those cultures and you see the other good aspect of it is that once these students go through this um, 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 experience this will even make life very very easy for them because by then they would have also adopted new strategies, technologies, 
and even new ways of conceptualizing all these issues. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Great.